celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. This is Alex, this is the Ramble, it goes till midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and about 25 minutes from right now we'll be checking in with our citizens panel, but right now we check in with an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, gracing us is the fabulous Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Bubs. Good to hear you, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. To, We're going to well, deliver a very positive program, as we always do. Yes, we always do, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, this is uh, always taped in advance, so what I'm talking about is probably a couple of weeks old. But it's interesting that the attorney general in the state of New York uh, who has called Harvey Weinstein's alleged treatment of women despicable. <laughs> it was worse than Harvey. <laughs> resigned amid allegations that he physically abused four women. So, <laughs> you know, this whole world becomes, it's bizarro world. Oh my, I just saw that. He's like, uh, yeah, he was horrible. <laughs> I mean, he didn't just, he didn't just, you know, force himself sexually on him. In that regard, Harvey was a gentleman. You know, yeah, he he he, he, he reputedly, <laughs> allegedly beat the shit out of these women. Yeah. So you know, uh, and he's also a, a, a attorney who is a general who was uh, is he the attorney general? Yeah, he's the attorney general of New York. Uh, he also has gone out after Trump, so that's going to make give Trump a big sigh of relief and many more. Um, you know posts that he can make saying oh look uh, see how crooked the attorney general was blah 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 but anyway that's old news by the time this is playing yeah but, but uh, he's i guess that and wasn't the attorney general before him that spitzer <laughs> it's itzer yeah uh, <laughs> spitzer all over her face pick, pick, uh, spitzer was actually okay you know i mean he was he was a good attorney general and then he, be, you know, he didn't have much time to become a good uh, governor, uh, but uh, he was, uh, you know, it was what he got caught in the middle of was hiring a hooker when he was in Washington. Yeah, you know, and uh, I, I thought that that was, I don't know, a specious at best. Come on, who hasn't tried to hire a hooker in their lifetime? <laughs> Right, Bubs? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you used to knock on doors in Oakland, and what did you say as you were knocking on them? Are you open? I have cash. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've never hired a hooker in my life, oddly enough. Once really? somebody else did. You know, I was with a bunch of guys, and they go, hey, we'll, we'll buy you. Have you ever gone to a hooker? And I went, no, and they said, okay, we'll pay for it. And so I went. So technically, I've never paid for a hooker, mm. you know. Uh, but I, I did that once and I just said, this is not fun. I mean, did you really you used to do that joke all the time, but did you go to hookers? I hit a few of them over there. Yeah. They were, uh, like, uh, massage parlors actually. Oh, okay. So you were, you yeah. were, you were getting a, uh, shall we say a complete massage a complete, with, a hap yeah. with a happy, happy ending. <laughs> Or maybe in your case, a not so happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> very grim ending. A very grim ending. Can you give me a massage with a grim ending, please? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, the last time we were talking, we we finished off by talking about how Trump's been good for comedy. You know, it's yeah. Been... I think uh, what I thought Colbert was literally like days from being canceled. And then he went all anti Colbert, and that brought he, he his was ratings he back. was not doing well over at CBS. They were not happy with him, and all of a sudden, because you know what it was when he first went over to CBS, he decided, well, I don't want to be the political guy anymore. I'm going to just do a comedy show, right? Mm -hmm. And so he stayed away from that kind of. And then all of a sudden, uh, it looked like he was going to be canceled. So he went back to old tricks, and it's gotten he beats out Fallon. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so and Fallon tries to do some political comedy, but doesn't know how. hasn't Hasn't a clue. 
So it's been pretty good for him. Yeah, it's been been great for him actually. To tell you the damn yeah. truth. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but um, uh, uh, it, it 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 it's been good for comedy all the way around. I mean, um, I think the best guy doing comedy of a political nature on TV now is John Oliver, uh, who is just brilliant, brilliant, and funny, and takes no prisoners. And uh, really, really, really good, you know. But anyway, so so you say Trump's been good for comedy. Well, he's, yeah, I think he's uh, saved some shows like uh, Colbert, and uh, I I don't watch the late night TV anymore. But I heard it's mostly just all they're all political now. Well, uh, I don't know that uh, which could his, get a little tiring, I would think. But it, uh, what's his name? The tubby guy with the uh, sing, karaoke in the cars. He is oh the English guy. He, yeah, he isn't that political. Uh, but uh, Seth Meyers certainly is. He starts the show off every night doing what is essentially the Saturday Night Live news segment, you know. Uh, and uh, and that was something I said. He, when he first started, he didn't do that. He came out like anybody else and stood up there and did some jokes. And I said, they, what he should do is he should immediately be, you know, they should come in on him and he's sitting at the desk and he should do like a Saturday Night Live newscast. And that's what they finally did with it. And he's doing very well, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, whatever you know, it's it's the house of the uh, what is it um, uh, four, three or four Jimmies? There's Jimmy Fallon, there's uh, Jimmy Kimmel, who's very good by the way. Jimmy Kimmel's very political, and then there's uh, James. Uh, what's his name um, over at CBS? Uh, uh, Corden. Or Jim, like James Corden. So there's yeah. there's three Jimmies in late night. You know, uh, and I, 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 that must be a very common name, I guess, right? You have to work in late night. Your name has to start with a J. It has like to start. Jay Leno, Johnny Carson. You're right. I didn't stop to think about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, David Letterman. Uh, <laughs> Jack Parr. Jack Parr? Wow, you're right. There are a lot of J's in. Uh, yeah. In uh, late night TV. Oh well, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. So anyway, well, a while back, yeah. uh, you dazzled me with your uh, knowledge of people I found that were dead in entertainment. Yeah. So you're going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. You're going to try it again, and this time I will probably be terrible. Okay. You never let us down. Uh, I always I I've heard this name. Boy, this is really because I'm old. a little loopy. I'm a little loopy on uh, 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 what do you call it? Medicine, uh, 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 pollen medicine, hay fever. This medicine. may be out of your wheelhouse. This one's so old. Francis X. Bushman. Oh, Francis X. Bushman. Yeah. Well, no, I mentioned him the last time. Oh, we did. Yeah. I, I like that. Uh, Francis. Of the X. Yeah. Francis Francis X. Bushman was, I think, the star of Ben Hur, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, that's right. You brought yeah, that, that, yeah. that. Okay. Right, yeah, I, right. I got him mixed up with Elmo Lincoln, yeah, who was Lincoln. the first Tarzan. Uh, a man I vaguely remember, Leo G. Carroll. Oh, Leo G. Carroll. I loved Leo G. Carroll. I just remember Topper. Well, uh, Leo, oh, Leo G. Carroll. Oh, Leo G. Carroll. Yeah, of course. He was in Topper. It's funny. I was thinking of Leo Carrillo. Uh, he was uh, uh, he was in Topper, and then the, I guess what he's most famous for is uh, Spellbound. He played the doctor, uh, the bad doctor in uh, Spellbound. I, you know, I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, he was always oh, also in North by Northwest, where he plays uh, Cary Grant's handler. Yeah. See? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. That's Leo um, G. Carroll. I don't think I'm going to do as well today because I'm feeling loopy. But go ahead, have you're at it. on the, <laughs> you're crazy on the goofballs. Yeah, I'm crazy on the goofballs. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Louise. Oh, how about uh, Hugh Beaumont? Because I don't know. Well, Hugh Beaumont. Did, he do, did you, he do anything but leave it to Beaver? Well, I was going to say leave it to Beaver. Uh, he That's was in. The only thing I know uh, okay, you Beaumont, I believe, was in a movie called Rocket Ship XM. I may be right, I may be wrong. Let me look it up here. Uh, which was one of my favorite uh, science fiction pictures as a kid. Rocket Ship XM. Uh, and he wasn't really even the star. Lloyd Bridges was. 
uh, let's see, Rocket Ship XM. It was the first one that comes up. Lloyd Bridges, Owen Masson, and who else? Uh, Noah Berger, you O'Brien. Excuse me. That was you o That was you O'Brien. I'm sorry. It wasn't. Uh, he went, who went out to be on to be Wyatt Earp, but you uh, Beaumont was yeah. You Beaumont was uh, you know. Leave it to Beaver. That's it. You know. That's what what he will forever be known for. Okay. Uh, Guy Kibbe. Oh, Guy Kibbe. I can see Guy Kibbe. He was a, he was a, a what I call a, a, a also actor. He always was after the main stars. And Guy Kibbe had a kind of very cherubic face. And I'm trying to remember what movies he may have done. Um, and I don't know if I... And let me look it up here. Uh, you know, But I, can, I know him. I just can't remember things that he was in because he was in so many things. Okay, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Um, Captain January with Shirley Temple. Captain Blood, you know. Uh, Rain with Joan Crawford. I mean, these these are all um, pictures that he was in. But he was in. He was one of those guys, you know, who was hired by the movie company, and they just said, "Okay, you go over to Lot Twenty One. You're doing a film with uh, Joan Crawford today." You know. Yeah. <laughs> but he was an older, kind of an older guy, and even when he was younger, he probably looked older, and he, he had a very cherubic face, and I can see it in front of me right now, but. To try and remember any of the films he was in is difficult. But I just okay. mentioned a few. But Brian Keith. Up. Brian Keith was... Um, um, Brian Keith, I know the actor again. I see his face in front of me. But I'm trying to remember films that he was in. He was in some really... Cause I, he did some really dark films. And then he, end, he ended with some really lame sitcom, The uh, Family Affair. Uh, yes. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yes. So you see, you get one I didn't get. Okay. And he committed suicide. Did he commit suicide? Uh, really? I think with a gun, yeah. Really? Yeah, he had a, I think he had a really horrible disease. Oh, son of a bitch. God, I hope that if I get a horrible disease, I will be brave enough to do that. But I don't think I would be. I'm, well, that would, yeah. That's, it's quick, but, uh, whew. Yeah, well, you leave. You know something? People who commit suicide in violent ways uh, really have a distrust or dislike for people uh, because they want they they don't consider leaving behind a body that someone else is going to have to find, and that if it's particularly horrendous, it's a something that's going to live with them for the rest of their lives. So a lot of times, people who commit suicide because they want to make their families feel bad will do it in a very violent way. Oh, they come in, wow. they see him strung up, you know, or his bl brain's blown out or whatever. They don't just take, uh, you know, uh, a lot of pills, go off to a motel somewhere, take a lot of pills and, and say goodbye. Yeah, you know? that, that does sound like a lot of rage. Yeah, there's a rage there. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I only know her from one thing. I think uh, one of the first lesbians on TV, Nancy Culp. <laughs> Well, of course, Beverly Hillbilly. Right. Is that all she did? Uh, that was, well, Nancy Culp, I think she was around, you know. She she did her character stuff, and then all of a sudden uh, Beverly Hillbillies came on. And then I think she ran for political office. If I I'm think not, she did, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah. How am I doing so far? Doing so good, pretty good. Not as, uh, not as masterful not as, as last Not as good as last time. time, but you're on the pills. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Al, Aldo Ray. Aldo, I, I Ray well, Aldo Ray was an actor who uh, um, uh, was in uh, um, what was that? What was that war film that he was in? I mean, I know Aldo Ray, and I, I know his his work, but I can't remember a specific picture that he was in. Uh, but he was around for quite a while. He had some problem, didn't he, in his in his life? I. Uh, trying to think he was was it from what he was in the war picture it's the only one i know him from uh from here was not from here to eternity was a naked jungle or uh well he was in we're no, we're no angels nightfall what was it? there was one film in the very beginning that he was known for um 
I'm trying. Boy, he did a lot of pictures, though. Um, Sunday's here. Uh, no, let's see here. Uh, Miss Sadie Thompson. He was in. I have that here in 3D. Oddly enough. Um, yeah, he was. You know, he he was there. He really worked though. He he worked and worked and worked and worked, and then he died uh, at the age of 64 in Martinez, California. Wow. Yeah. Um, and his son was an actor later on, and his his name was. Uh, God, I can't remember. I think it, something Ray, but he did it R A E, I think. Uh, but I'm trying to remember that. I I don't remember. Anyway, go ahead. Next one. A woman I actually saw at an airport in Vancouver uh, long before I got into comedy. Uh, Gloria Swanson. Well, of course we know Gloria Swanson. I mean, uh, she had a, a, a career in movies uh, uh, in the silent era. And her basic financial backer was Joe Kennedy. Uh, and her, I th believe she also was fucking him. Oh, I didn't know she had the Kennedy connection. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, uh, Kennedy had a, had a movie company, and he would back movies. And uh, he backed Gloria Swanson. In fact, he backed the film that never got finished, that she did where it was directed by Eric von Stroheim. I'm trying to remember the name of the film now. But it's the film that they use in uh, in in uh, Sunset Boulevard when they're sitting there watching her old movies. It's that movie that they're showing. Or, but it was not a finished film because uh, she and von Stroheim hated each other. And they... Uh, um, and he was a very demanding director. And I think he was finally thrown off the film, and they just never completed the film. Uh, but uh, it's then very funny that in Sunset Boulevard, she was willing to star with him. Yeah, yeah. In the film where he's playing her old director. Uh, uh, either they made up or somebody just said, look, this would just be a great pairing, and she agreed. You know, uh, But Eric von Stroheim... Uh, made, I think, one of the best movies. See, how do we go from Gloria Swanson to Eric von Straum? One of the best movies that I've ever, I've ever seen. Uh, and it's a silent film called Greed. And uh, he finished the film. It took him forever. He was, he was one of these guys who just uh, was, was an absolute uh, perfectionist. For instance, he was doing a thing... Uh, what was what was the film he did? Hold on a second. Let me look up his as a director. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the Merry Widow, I believe it was. Oh, the the film I was trying to think of with um, uh, uh, Gloria Swanson that he directed was Queen Kelly. That's what all the footage is from. But anyway, I'm looking here. The Merry Widow, and he recreated Monte Carlo, um, and um, uh, that's their main set. And then when he had things like uh, a woman was taking a champagne bath, he used real champagne, ah. you know. And so he was driving the uh, then head of of, uh, of the studio, um, Irving Thalberg. He was the head of Universal at the time, he was running it as a head of production. He drove him nuts. And finally, Thalberg left the studio, went to MGM. Well, on Stroheim, didn't get along too well with Universal anymore after Champagne Baths, and they fired him. So he went over to MGM, where, of course, there's Thalberg again. And he wants to do this film called Greed. And he makes this movie, and he starts making it. Was filmed in, he filmed it on location, something he didn't do a lot in those days. He took the entire crew up to, of all places, San Francisco. That's where it was filmed. And uh, it's a masterful film. And when he was finished with it, it was seven and a half hours long. Jesus. And Thalberg looked at this and said, ain't no, <laughs> ain't no seven hour movie I'm releasing at MGM and fired him. 
and then went back into the editing room and edited it down to two and a half hours, which is the only version you can now see the rest of it completely lost. Really? That's too bad. Completely lost. Uh, it may have been just burned or whatever. But uh, the only version that lasts is two and a half hours. However, years ago, I got to talking about this film with somebody who you don't normally think of as talking, Teller from Penn and Teller, and saying what a wonderful movie it was and how I loved it. And the next thing I know, in the mail, he has sent me a rare edition of a book, and I have it somewhere in storage, of the screenplay to Greed, and it is the complete screenplay with everything that he intended in the film. Uh, but the film has been lost to the ages, and some people say the holy grail of film is that you know, we can't believe that he didn't take home a seven-hour, seven-and-a-half-hour version of this film and keep it at home or that it wasn't yeah. in a vault somewhere. But that's the holy grail is to find a completed copy of Greed, but they don't think there is one. Well, that's see that that was a home run. You just hit well. So it started with Gloria Swanson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was great. Yeah, Greed. Uh, I I feel Greed. bad that I couldn't remember Queen Kelly. <laughs> so the so I guess the Kennedy family has a, a long history of uh, <laughs> banging women. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. just John and Bobby. <laughs> yeah, um, but she didn't have much of a career once sound came in. And then uh, when they were going to make the movie, uh, Sunset Boulevard, I think Billy Wilder tried to get somebody else. Uh, he tried to get another silent film actress, but she wasn't available. Uh, and so he went to, to um, Swanson, and Swanson said yes. And uh, what she said yes to was what turned out to be one of the best movies of its era, you know. Um uh, and one of the greatest, quote, most quoted lines in movies. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful film. Just I, I, Every now and then I'll watch it. Just be, And you've got some old, I, I'm i trying to, oh, Farnham. What was the guy's first name uh, is in that film. And uh, wait a minute, let me, let me see here. Let me look up, um, quickly look up, uh, uh, come on, get past all that. Get back to actor. Could be so, Dustin so, Farnham. Dustin William Farnham. Farnham. It's either Dustin or William. Uh, if Farnham is in this film, and um, another person who's in it uh, is yeah Franklin Farnham. No, Franklin Farnham is the Undertaker. But what was what was that guy's name? Well, H. B. Warner's in it and Anna Q. Nilsson and Buster Keaton. And they all play the people who play cards with her on Saturday nights. Wow. Or they all get dressed up and, you know, go play. Uh, uh, I can't remember what the game was they play in that film. But it, what was great is that, that uh, Billy Wilder populated the film with a lot of old actors and actresses. And it, it was... A, a wonderful picture, and it's a superb performance by Swanson, who was really going against type. She probably could have, later on she was in films and she was more normal as an actress, but she really mm -hmm. knew how to be over the top in this thing. And that's the quality he wanted, you know. Okay. That silent quality. Well, I think you got time for one more question. One more, and I, I had, this is the last name, and I, I lived to be 103, Adolf Zucker. <laughs> Adolf Zucker was a producer, uh, and uh, I believe, if I'm not incorrect, one of the founders of uh, Paramount Pictures. Okay. Um, he brought uh, Cecil B. DeMille out from the East Coast to direct Squaw Man. I think that's where they started, and I think that was Adolf Zucker's uh, career. But basically, he was the head of Paramount Pictures. He was the creator of Paramount Pictures. Let me see here. Let's go Zucker. Uh, Adolf, 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 come on. That's that's not right. He should be at the top of the list. Um, but then again, uh, Adolf, yeah, Zuck, Zucker. Okay, Adolf Zucker. Um, boy, it doesn't, huh. 
I'm not, ha I'm not coming up with anything. Isn't that strange? Uh, Adolf Zucker. Adolf Zucker. 103. Yeah. God. Let me see here. Come on. Now it's not going. That's, that, that goes, but that doesn't go. The other name doesn't go. That's strange. Oh, I'm having trouble with it. But he, he, he was the guy who started Paramount Pictures. Okay. okay. Anyone that lived that long deserves something. Does it have a, how, how, how old he was when he died? Uh, born in 1873, died in 1976. Yeah, so that would have to be the move. You know, the guy who started Paramount. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so how do you think I did today? You did very good, especially being on the pills. Yeah, being on the so, pills, yeah, being a little on the loopy stuff. But, and uh, by the, the glorious, way, folks, I only, Gloria Swanson was a home run. I only look at IMDb when I finally have to find some names of pictures that they were in. I, mm -hmm. I, but I, all the people you named, I knew. There wasn't yeah. somebody there. I went. Ah, I don't know who Guy Kibbe is. You know, I Guy knew. Kibbe. <laughs> no, I mean, I could sit there if I had a uh, if I had a guy here who did like, uh, you know, at the police department did suspect sketches and stuff like that. I could describe Guy Kibbe, <laughs> and he would be able to draw a picture of Guy Kibbe. So that's my that's the way I look at. It. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Bubbles always, always a pleasure. Flies by. Always fun. Always Thank exciting you. when you're having times with Bubs. Thanks, Bubs. Thanks, Alex. Bye bye. Bye bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Ta da! Thank you, Bubbles. We really enjoy Bubbles. I love Bubbles. I think Bubbles is one of the funniest people around, and I, I also also one of the most um, uh, uh, interesting people to talk to when you want to get into a conversation. So I, he makes me talk and makes me talk about things. Yeah, uh, we're going to be ready here in a moment to go to the citizens panel. Let me get rid. Oops, let me get rid of that. Hold on a second. I got to get rid of that and then i got to bring up this see you don't know what i'm doing you can't tell from what i'm uh what i'm saying uh but uh you know uh it, it, uh, it works okay let me see here there we go and now we open up the uh the panel uh we open up the skype so we get the citizens panel so they're ready to roll and we're ready to hear from you if you want to call by the way i uh Look at that. That's a T-shirt that was from, uh, God, 1993 uh, for the Punchline in San Francisco. And uh, what I, it happened today, I put it on, and then what I did is I didn't put this on, right? And watch what happens to, watch what happens to the light because automatically it turns down the light because this is so, uh, so white. Okay, so I have to bring this back up and that, notice now how the uh, light, uh, see? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, boy. And I, 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 I wish I could take it off of automatic, but I can't take it off of automatic. So we're, uh, we're, that's the way things go. Anyway, cup of coffee. Getting rid I, I'm doing coffee tonight. I don't know why. It's because my wife gave me this. This is a Xanax. And it's a new kind she's getting that's green in color, and it's cut into thirds. So I'm going to try it if I can't get to sleep tonight. That's always good, right? Right. Anyway, uh, it's time now for people to call our little uh, festive program. By the way, uh, if you want to find out how to do that, you just go over to gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. And over the right-hand side of the page is a whole little... Uh, tutorial on how to get Skype, how to use Skype, how to call us using Skype. There's even a button there that you can press to have it automatically call us here, okay? So all those things being equal, and a phone number for people who don't want to use Skype. So that's, uh, that's our, uh, our, our way of getting in touch with us. And uh, over there, you can also, if you, if you don't want to miss the show, you're going to see the show is there too because the video runs on that page. It's also running right now on uh, on uh, YouTube, and if you just want the audio, uh, you can go to that page, click on the 
right under the uh, the logo, the Gabnet logo, there's a thing uh, for you to listen to us. You click on that, and it brings up our uh, our feed. So that's all the different ways you can get in touch with us and have something to do with us. Um, I guess that's you know that's the uh, as much of a tutorial as I can give you. Uh, we have this program, which goes on every night, uh, Tuesday through Friday, uh, for the time being, on at uh, what time? At uh, at uh, at ten o'clock at night. See, I have to know what time, otherwise I I wouldn't be here, right? Anyway, uh, and uh, we uh, we just sit around and talk with people. We have a thing called the citizens panel. If some people would start to call, and we could uh, uh, get a. Uh, 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 um, uh, you know, the, an idea of uh, who's calling us this evening. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, just, uh, let me see here. Let me, how do I get rid of that? Okay, I get rid of that, get rid of that. I'm trying to clean up my, uh, my thing here. We're waiting for people to call. I notice a lot of people are getting online tonight, but uh, who knows if they're calling or not. So we'll just wait and see. Um, but the other thing we're doing, we're doing this thing called uh, Alex Bennett's uh, break, uh, News Break. What do I call it? I don't even remember what I call it. I think it's News Break. And uh, that you can get on our Facebook page. Okay, it goes up around eh, at 1 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. Hey, look who's here for the second night in a row, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. For some reason, my, my, my uh, what do you call it isn't working. Your camera. My camera is not working. Uh, huh. Well, let me see here. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. I got to figure out why that isn't working. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, that, that doesn't. Uh, let me do that and see if it does it. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just go up to tools and options. There we go. Oh, uh, video settings. Uh, okay. Let me see here. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. That's not the one that I want. Mm. I don't want either of those. Where is the... Huh. Where is the... Um, hold on, folks. I'll be with you in a moment. <laughs> uh, getting down here on the floor. Getting this thing to work. Uh, there, that's, yeah, come on, jeez almighty, this is, hold on a second. Uh, technology. Huh? Isn't technology wonderful? <laughs> uh, isn't it? Let's see here. Oh, there we go. I got it. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, wait a minute, but it's, it's the wrong one. It shouldn't be that one. And the other one is turned off. That's strange. Oh, boy. Oh, man, oh, man. This is ridiculous. Uh, I, I'm going to have to, I, I don't know what my problem is here. Hold on. I, now I'm frozen to all my people out there. Let me yeah, go I here. Guess. Let me go here. Let me grab this. Let me get the uh, uh, Brio, Brio, okay, then I go back to here, and I go to Brio, and uh, there we go, I should be okay now on that. Now, I gotta figure out why I'm not getting the, uh, the other thing. Um, that's, uh, that's strange. Um, hmm, hold on folks, hold on. Uh, let me let me show them you at least you know uh, so they can they can see uh, Tom okay Tom is, <laughs> is suffering with us now as we try and work oh, our no. way through this problem I have to remember which one of these inputs is here okay uh, okay I don't want that and I don't want that now wait a minute where is this one this is going through here. Hold on a second. Uh, as this is all very interesting, isn't it, folks? This makes for some great broadcasting. 
Hold on. And then there's this and that. That goes there. That can't be. Although I have an idea of why this isn't working. There we go. Hold on. Uh, uh. Uh, let me see here now. What have we got? Do we have it? There we go. Now you'll be able to see me. Let me adjust this right. Hold on. Uh, um, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Do you, do you see me yet? Uh, hold on. No, where, where, am I, where, am I, where are my tools? Hold on a second. Here we go. Video settings. And I'm just trying to get this adjusted so it's just right. Okay. Save. There we go. Now. There. Can you see me? Oh, yes, I can uh, see you. Mm -hmm. That's good. Hey, folks. And, you know, we picked up all kinds of viewers while I was doing that. You yeah, know? 28. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and I, I can't figure out why that happens, but I think people like to see us fail. I, th I think that could be a whole new premise for a channel. We're fixing stuff. <laughs> Do you know they have people are uh, doing things online where they're uh, like opening uh, boxes? Oh, yeah, that's been going on for years. And people watch this by the thousands yeah. and thousands of just people opening up stuff they got from Amazon, for instance. Yeah. Or they, they have these. Uh, well, you remember uh, Miranda Janelle? Yeah. Used to do a thing. She had these, you know, these curated boxes of stuff from like right. comic, uh, you know, comic book related or science fiction. And she would do things where she would do the opening. Yeah. But that's a that's a really common thing on YouTube. My um, granddaughter likes to lot, watch videos like that where people are opening up uh, boxes of toys and stuff like that. Really? Occupied her. That's, but she's only That's incredible. So I, you seven. know, so maybe maybe I'm just missing a good bet by just not doing shit like that. Like, you know, we'll open boxes and I'll send away for stuff. It'll probably wind up costing me a fortune for all the shit I'll send away for, but you know, why not? You know. I'd rather you talk to Bubbles about movies. You love it when I talk to Bubbles about movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, Leo G. Carroll was also in The Man from Uncle. Yes, I, I, I'm glad that you uh, remember that. Let's see here. Choose a connection you want. I want this webcam. Okay, close. Okay, are you getting a picture of me, everybody? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, good. Yeah, what happened was earlier today I, I was fooling around down here and I put the, the camera back in the wrong computer. I have two computers <laughs> down there. And so I just found out that's what it was. But, it you know, it's a process of elimination where if I wasn't on the air at the present time, I, okay, I can, I can go through the whole process of elimination. But when I'm on the air, it sounds crazy. And everybody can see me down on the floor and, you know. Someday <laughs> well, I'm going to Someday I'm going to go down on the floor and I'm not going to get back up. So, you know, that's, that's going to be it. The just, audio was fine all the time. Well, I'm sure the audio was fine. We, ne we never really have that much trouble with our audio, although there are, you know, there's so much I have to do here in order to get, do this thing in video. I don't know why. It all started out to be like because I needed to do a radio program, right? And um, uh, all of a sudden, here I am, uh, um, uh, you know, doing it for video. So I've got to switch it, and things can go wrong with the cameras, and things can go wrong with the this and the that. And well, it's a pain in the ass. It's a yeah. pain in the you ass. You need a producer. Huh? You need a producer. Yeah, right. Like I can afford one, you know. <laughs> and like the only, you know, the only person who would work for nothing is like a kid. Right, so I got to find a kid somewhere who will do it, and then if I get a kid, you can't rely on a hundred percent, you know. So maybe I got to get a really old guy. No, but then he'll fuck up as much as I do. Eh, I don't. Maybe know. not. Maybe not. Maybe not. You know. Maybe if I, you know, somewhere some guy in his sixty is sixty-five doesn't work anymore and wants to help me every night do this program. Because you know how wonderful I could do this program if I had somebody switching the show for me, and all I had to worry about was talking to you people. Yeah. You know, but um, unfortunately, um, that is not to be. So. 
what the hell. Uh, so uh, how are you tonight, gentlemen? Uh, are, are you guys going to be the only ones calling, or are we going to hear from some other people? I noticed that Rob was online. He's down in Nashville on some kind of learning thing, you know, for his job. And he said he might try and call, and I saw him sign on, so I don't know whether he was attempting to... Yeah, I hope uh, Renee uh, gets in touch with us because there was a huge uh, ash explosion on Kilauea uh, this morning. And then uh, yeah. now the, a, a, more, a couple more fissures opened up as yeah. the volcano was, yeah. you know, going uh, uh, eastward towards the ocean. Right. Hello. Uh, and this is Chris Ritter, ladies and gentlemen, who is called us before you finally say hello to us chris so we know you're fine hopefully my audio is working well. yeah just turn it down a little bit it's a little okay. on the on the hot side but uh, other than that it's perfect you know is that good yeah okay. you're now you're now a gabnet professional you know yeah with, with the headset and the whole thing awesome yeah, getting you, there you know th th that's a cheap headset right I think it is. Yeah, my wife got it, so I think so. Yeah, they they're like they're like sometimes like 19 bucks and the sound out of them is phenomenal. Yeah. You know. So, uh, yeah. you know, I suggest that anybody who can do it get one of those kind of headsets like he's got with the microphone on it and you're you're good to go. Uh, on, of course, Tom has always been the luddite of the group. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. Not, maybe uh, I'm oh, the Luddite. Wait, 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 what? I'm get annoyed about how you got throw around the term Luddite. It's, okay. it's very annoying. Yeah, and, you're and not... I think that may be the reason why a lot of people are, are intimidated because, you know, you, you, you're condescending when you call somebody who is technically challenged a Luddite. <laughs> you know? Well, no, I, it, think it, it, I think technically challenged is worse than a, shall we say, Dictionary vented word, you know. I mean, uh, vetted word. Um, I think luddite is uh, is actually uh, something to be proud of because it comes from a tradition of. I think it started because there were some people called the luddites, right? Yeah, who exactly. shoot yeah. uh, technology of the times, and well, they, re they rejected industrial society as a whole. Yeah. And yeah. uh, so they became the, they they were the original luddite. So you, it, a luddite comes from a grand tradition. See, I mean, I quite frankly, I think that somebody like Bubbles, who was the, I guess, the ultimate luddite, uh, that of anybody that I know. I mean, with you, I was kidding, but with him, it's for real. But I admire him. I mean, I wish I had chosen not to have anything to do with any of this technology. Yeah. Do we? No, I'm serious. Be can I can I tell a story? Sure. I, I think uh, this whole issue with computers and having to keep up a constant learning curve is something we all experience. And my son went to school, uh, you know, years ago, with uh, another kid whose dad worked for LucasArts. Yeah. And this uh, John, uh, I forget his first name was John. He uh, designed the posters for The Rocketeer and, oh, nice. you know, a bunch of films. I mean, you, you've all seen those posters. They're fantastic. Well, Lucas, LucasArts was the gaming people uh, at yeah. uh, Lucas. Not, he, he would be with... Well, the, he, this guy worked on the motion pictures. That well, that, that was by, not LucasArts. That was just Lucas. ILM, yeah. sorry. IL, was on, ILM, yeah. okay. Uh, on Kerner Boulevard, right here in San Rafael. You can still go by there. It's... Still a studio, but it's not owned by Lucas. So well, you know, uh, you, know, you John, know what he did though for years there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th That's where they did why, all the special effects for like Star Wars and so on. Yeah, and right. and and there were always explosions going on there. Yeah, but the thing so, was, it so no one would find it. They <laughs> had a sign outside that said Kerner Optical. That's right. And everybody yeah. thought it was like they made glasses for people. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very dis well. Anyways. So I asked John, I said, well, what do you use to design your artwork? And because uh, he invited me into his studio and uh, he said, well, Photoshop. And I said, OK, I, I was just finishing my degree in web development at the mm -hmm. time. And I had to take programming and graphic arts courses and everything. Yeah. So I said, John, I said, you're top of your game. I said, just let me have it. Give me the honest truth. Do you know? everything there is to know about Photoshop 
or do you sometimes run into problems? And he just looked at me and he broke out laughing. And he says, I'm looking at the manual <laughs> all the time. So even a guy at the top of his game working for ILM can have frustrations with computers. So oh, I, I think it's not us. I, I'm so going to tell you something right now. If you use a piece of technology like Photoshop or what have you, name it, yeah. okay, and you don't use it for a, a, a half a year, you have to go back Bingo. to the manual. You can't remember how it was done. Do you oh, have yeah. problems? That, yeah. Do you, do you, are you, a, are you, uh, Chris, are you uh, computer literate, basically? Uh, computer literate adjacent. Ever since I got married, she took over, and I, I regressed. But uh, uh, you mean I she's, did, she's, I the did she's the Photoshop. Uh, she's I the. Was a, I, I yeah. worked at the 20th Century Fox archive on oh. Pico for a while, and yeah. everyone there was using Photoshop to uh, restore. Uh, brutalize negatives and restore and and I was watching them do it and I got a little mm -hmm. bit into it and but they moved me into uh, something else because they were better at it than I was so uh, well, what did you do for the Fox archives did you say Fox you yeah well we, we were finding a way to make it profitable by getting all the pictures up and running t for all those uh, true life Hollywood shows that were going and and we were licensing a lot of the uh, footage, and not the footage, but still photos yeah, and, and yeah. everything. And and so was, we were organizing that and everything. And uh, there's a huge underground vault there, and it's it's I think it's about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And I just would go in there and uh, look at all these amazing photos that I never knew existed from back, you know, behind the scenes. Wow. And, and uh, but we would find those are, and then are, we'd are, try to market them yeah. and make it profitable. Are you still doing that? No, that was a long time ago. Other other jobs. That was a long time ago. Wow, but, that uh, that was that must have been a fascinating but, job. By the way, yeah, Rob got me going uh, with Larry Bubbles Brown and thinking about all the films from the '60s, <laughs> '70s, and yeah. '80s at Fox. And uh, I got a name for you. I don't know if it'll jog a memory, but yeah. we were looking at all the female comedians from the '70s. Uh, see if this rings a bell. Edwidge Fennick. What? Uh, an Italian girl, Edwidge Fennick. She did Italian sex comedies, kind of. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not really up on Italian sex comedies. Oh, yeah, she's <laughs> okay. At San Francisco, she was a little bit popular. Really? Uh, but, by the uh, way, like, yeah, the circling you see down there is Rob. Rob, you're not getting uh, video to us, but are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can yeah, hear you. Just uh, can't see a picture yeah. on you. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work tonight because um, I think um, I don't even think it's the bandwidth in here. Um, I couldn't get the camera to turn on when I turn the computer on. I see the this is my work laptop. Yeah. So it's it's Windows 10 piece of crap. And <laughs> <laughs> well, so. you, you're used to using Macs, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, outside of work, but for uh, for the job you have, I guess you have to use PC because uh, PC is what most of your products run on, right? It's what they give me. <laughs> that's what they give you. That's, why, that's what they give you. So, and I wasn't going to bring two laptops. So, I'm not that. Uh, I'm not that mad about. I mean, I'm not. How do I put this? I am not that dissuaded from Windows 10. I found that it was a great upgrade for uh for microsoft i think it finally brought them into the 21st century it's uh, all right it's just like for example it, it takes forever to boot it up and it takes forever to shut it down and you can't just close the lid and expect to pick up where you left off and that's the beauty of a laptop that's why i love my mac when i'm done with it i close the lid i carry it into another room pick it up if it's been long enough i just have to put in my password otherwise it's Ready to go. Ready to go. Doing. Yeah. Well, I have uh, in this uh, Windows PC and the other one that I have in the other room, uh, because it came from my wife's office, they put in a flash drive instead of a hard drive. So this thing starts up real fast. Yeah. There's. I have two you flash know. drives in this laptop. Still, you can't. You can't. You can't snooze it by I close oh, the lid. I if you see. do, oh, okay. It, it, it's confused and it doesn't know what to. <laughs> uh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, well, Windows never figured out. Microsoft never figured out how to do that. Yeah, uh, well, um, you know, there there are a lot of things that bother me about Mac 
that I was mentioning this last night, and this was the one that really got to me, is that whenever they do a, uh, you know, like I get a thing saying, oh, there's a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, an upgrade, not an upgrade, but, you know, an update. And, uh, and every time you go on, about every 10 minutes, the goddamn thing comes up and says, there's another update. Do you want to do another update? No, wait till tomorrow. Then tomorrow, do you want another update? And finally, well, you do the update, and the only reason I don't want to do the update is I know I'm going to be sitting around for an hour without a machine because M Mac takes so long to upgrade its OS, whereas Microsoft 10 really kind of does its OS pretty fast. You know why? Why? Because all it's doing is making a mess of your operate. You ever notice that with any Windows operating system, I don't care what you do with the computer, after a year and a half or two years of updates, the machine crawls, and you need to reinstall Windows again. With Macs, they're reinstalling the operating system for you. It's clean. You don't have that problem. No, with Macs. okay, all right, I'll buy that. It's same. I'll it's buy just, that. It's more Windows crap. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and you and you're and basically you're in the business not of selling but of servicing and uh, people on PCs, isn't it? No, I, I don't work with computers. I I sell um, um, data center stuff. Okay. So yeah. It's not 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 in any way tied to Windows or to Microsoft or to anybody. Yeah. Do you understand any of that data center stuff? I mean, yeah, I better. You, be, or you I won't better. You be better. Working. I mean, <laughs> in fact, you're out learning this week, right? You're in Nashville. Yeah, it's a week of uh, it's all of the tech folks from the company meeting in Nashville from all over the all over the country, and it's eight a.m. to six p.m. seminars. Oh boy, is that exciting? I am riveted. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then is there you know there's an evening of fun. Like tonight, it was at a sweaty bar down, downtown. Uh, Nashville uh -huh. with a very poor little bit of food, loud music, yeah. and all the booze you can drink. Really? And uh, I lasted there about the fight at the first bus back. It's still going on now. Oh, no, it's, well, wait a minute. It's, uh, what time is it here now? It's 10 o'clock here? Yeah. So it's just ending here. It oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a big. I, look, 61 years old. My days in bars are over. Yeah. But you got to make that out. You know, the obligatory. You know, you got to show up. Yeah. So I well, went. Well, I, I, my my day in bars was over when I was 21. I mean, the minute well, I couldn't, uh, the minute I could legally drink, I stopped drinking. Yeah. Well, I put my time in. I put my years and years in. Oh, really? I've worked in bars. I've DJed in bars. I've been drunk in bars. Yeah, <laughs> way longer than I should have. Yeah, I just never uh, liked hanging out in bars. I never, I, I, and I never had the, um, what can we call it, the, uh, the sophistication of, of, of pub crawling, you know. Uh, so I, 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 I never, for instance, I never knew how to pick up a woman in a bar. Yeah, it's very a bad at that kind of stuff. Yeah. I always was lucky because I was always either very close friends with the bartender or I was working there as, yeah. a, as a DJ, so you it's easier to meet women that way. I, I'm glad. But you're right. If you're standing at a bar, yeah. you, it's not easy to meet women. you got to really have that, that but, rap to do that. But there was the day that I finally f discovered marijuana. And it changed my life for me because at last I had some kind of social activity I could engage in that I didn't mind doing. Like, I didn't like di drinking, okay? But pot was okay. You know, it was fine. I don't do it anymore, but, you know, I guess I matured out of it or something. I did when I was in Vegas. When you were in Vegas? What do you mean? What yeah. did you do? Legal there. Did oh, buy, oh, I you see. You could go and buy it right on the site. Yeah, I went to one of the dispensaries and bought it. And uh, I actually, I bought a vape pen. It was a, oh really? It was a, a pen. I didn't buy pot because first of all, there's no place to smoke if you're in a, if you're if you're a visitor. Think mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. You can't smoke in a hotel. Can't smoke in a rental car, and nor would. Right. 
Are you still there? I think we lost Rob. I'm here. Oh, oh, you're there. Oh, okay. But you, you, so you're saying you, 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 even if you have a vape, you can't use that, right? Oh, you can get away with the vape pen because yeah. it doesn't really cause any smoke or anything like that. Yeah. You know, but that's why I bought the vape pen as as opposed to just buying a small amount of pot because ah. you can smoke it in the car you can not in the car I wouldn't smoke it in the car but you can smoke it in the hotel room and it's not going to make a, a smoky mess you know right but they, they don't allow they, do they still have smoking rooms in hotels or when you book into a hotel you can't smoke no yeah, they, no. they do in california they have smoke really rooms. yeah yeah uh, who would want to be in a smoking room in a hotel it's it would be tough or the smoking yeah. section like I, well, in it, Vegas, Vegas, I smoked a cigar while I was while I was playing. You know, you in the casino. Mm -hmm. I had a nice big fat cigar going, and it was great. Yeah. Whoops, we Whoops. lost somebody. We lost uh, Tom. He'll call back. Uh, right. Yeah, because I. Uh, yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, you. I I didn't stop thinking about it. You can actually now you can buy pot in California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada. Where else? Um, in that part of the country, Colorado, which is Colorado, yeah. right? I think it's right next to Nevada, isn't it? At one point, or near it. So I mean, near really, yeah. that well, that whole part of the country is starting to become inundated with being pot uh, pot uh, friendly, as it were. Yeah, well, unless Jeff Sessions gets his way. Well, yeah, but Jeff Sessions isn't going to get his way because, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, it, it, you've got it at some point, states' rights does come into play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, by the way, today, uh, the, it, very, it, it was wonderful of the Senate to do it, although it's not going to help much. But the Senate voted against... Um, uh, net neutrality. Uh, net neutrality. End, ending. Net yeah. Neutrality. Uh, well, they uh, well against the FCC being able to end net neutrality. Uh, so now it goes to the House where it will be roundly defeated. And even if they passed it, the president would defeat it. Yeah. So it, it. Thank you very much, Senate. We appreciate it, and you know we'll we'll vote for senators this year, right? You know, but. Um, uh, it, it's it's uh, the whole thing's a shame. It, it I, I every day I get more and more depressed. So you wanna you wanna hear something that'll make you guys happy? Oh, I just gave myself <laughs> a paper fucking cut on the air. Uh, By the way, I'll talk about technology challenges. I went to mute my mic for a moment and I hung up. <laughs> no, was it? See, all right. So, uh, you're, and you're not a luddite. Okay, all right. No, I'm not a luddite. I just uh, screw up once in a while. I have a list here of the the uh, 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 total wealth of various countries, uh, and um, I, would you like to know the richest countries in the world? The ten richest. Okay. Okay. This one won't surprise you, but this is number ten. You would think it was like higher, but our our good friend Bree lives there. The United yeah. Arab Emirates. Number oh, ten. Of course. Yeah. 168 billion dollars. Saudi Arabia, now you would think it would be higher up, but it's number nine with 169 billion dollars. Now, also in the Arab Emirates, they have 62 billionaires. Okay, in Saudi Arabia, they also have 62 billionaires. I wonder if they're the same billionaires. The United Kingdom comes in eighth. With a total uh, with 90 billionaires for a total worth of 251 billion. Yeah, this this is how much all the billionaires combined are worth. So, mm -hmm. at 90, they're worth an average of about five billion apiece. In Hong Kong, the number of billionaires rises to 93. The total wealth of those uh, 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 billionaires in Hong Kong 315 billion dollars. Hong Kong is semi-autonomous special administrative region of China. Okay, we know that. Russia comes in at number six, total number of billionaires, 96, or as we know them in this country, the oligarchs. And uh, they've got $351 billion. Switzerland, 
Now, tiny little Switzerland. Ready? 99 billionaires for $265 billion in net worth for all those guys together. In fourth place, India. 104 billionaires. Total wealth, 466 billion. Number two, any guesses? China. You're absolutely right. China comes in with a number 338 billionaires. This is a country that's a communist country, and they've got 338 billionaires. The total wealth of the billionaires together is 1.1 trillion. That only leaves one country, I guess, in the number one spot, and who could that possibly be? We're number one. We're number one. We have, how, any idea? If, if China has 338 billionaires, how many do you think we have in this country? Yeah, okay. Any any guess? 600, 680 wow. billionaires in the United yeah. States for a total wealth of $3.2 trillion. Now, I wonder what... In the what, hands of 338 huh? people. In the, no, in the hands or of 600, 680 people. Okay. Yeah. And so if, you're, not talking, you're not talking about the total wealth of, of each country. No, I'm talking about the total wealth of, of the 680 uh, billionaires is $3.2 trillion. Know, it, would, it would be interesting to hear what the rest of us have. <laughs> uh, have you heard the term bupkis? <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, but um, we have, uh, what, did I say 608, was it? No, 680. Hold on a second, let me go get the list again. Uh, 680 billionaires. Now, you divide that into 3.2 trillion. Anybody got a calculator? I don't think it goes up that high in zeros. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, all I know is 680, uh, and uh, that's a that's that's thir Let's see here. Would that be 32 billion dollars? No, no. I don't know how much that is. How a a a a trillion is how many billion? A thousand? Four point seven billion or something? Huh? Well, wait a minute. How many how many billions in a trillion? A thousand. A thousand. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, 3.2 thousand billion. Mm -hmm. no, uh, no, excuse me. I can't figure it out. Forget it. I was bad at math. <laughs> but I think that and our billionaires... How many billion live in Manhattan with you? I think our billionaires have more money per billionaire than any of these other countries have. And Donald Trump ain't one of them. He's not one of them. He's got like maybe... Two billion dollars after he pays for all those hookers, you know. Um, the latest yeah, deal on on, so on on Trump is that he came out with how much money he spent on stuff, and he spent two hundred and fifty million dollars on uh, Michael Cohn. Uh, but it doesn't say in there part of what I paid him for was Stormy Daniels. So well, he sort of had. He sort of had Giuliani admit that for him. Well, yeah, yeah. That great lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, who screwed the pooch on the whole deal. Yes, Tom. Well, they actually, he had to refile his uh, financial um, disclosure statement for last year. Yeah. Uh, because he didn't include that $130,000 that he reimbursed his lawyer to pay off Stormy Daniels. And so the White House released this statement saying, oh, we just did it as a courtesy. <laughs> and the ethics, uh, you know, the ethics people said, no, you were in violation of law. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, yeah, here's the thing I don't get, though, uh, is that um, uh, he is what he's saying is I paid Cohn two hundred and fifty million dollars. But he didn't say part of that went for the Stormy Daniels thing. This was just what I gave him. Mm -hmm. All right. So he didn't specify. And by the way, 130,000 of that was to go shut up Stormy Daniels. Uh, you know, first he pays mm -hmm. her to open her mouth, then he pays her to close her mouth. I don't get it. You know. <laughs> um, uh, let me see here. By the way, um, 
I want to ask uh, Chris, because you were talking about your work for 20th Century Fox and what were their archives and so on. What do you do now? Uh, I, I basically don't do much. I, I work for some entertainers. I help promote and I, I help them with their projects. I see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, but um, it leads to other things. You just try to make their life easier. It's kind of a high-end personal assistant, but not not really an assistant. Really? Here's a guy who needs a personal assistant, Help right? the actors. Yeah, I love actors, love magicians. I love uh, athletes, ex-baseball players. Just do what you can for them. Okay, but yeah. let me ask you a question. Uh, it, yeah. you, it, now, I have found over the years of, of dealing with people in show business that mm -hmm. uh, some people in show business, by virtue of their profession, are crazier than others. <laughs> All right? And I always found that the craziest of all the performers that I've known are impersonators and ventriloquists. They're all nuts. Okay? Hmm. Uh, yeah. did, did you find that uh, there was any particular group, uh, just a, a subset that you worked with that were crazier than others? Um, I don't really work with them, but circus clowns seem to be really <laughs> messed up. <laughs> um, <laughs> There don't seem to. I mean, I'm friends with one guy I went to college with, and he seems decent. But for the most part, there it's this group, and they just they say, "Hey, that's a great thing you just did. I'm going to use it now." And they there's everything is community property to them, and and they they I just I I grew up loving the idea of clowns, but I've never seen a funny clown. I've met a bunch of them. Yeah, aren't and they're almost anti-comics in a way when they get, take themselves too seriously. It's funny you I think should they're say, little nutty. Yeah. It's funny you should say the clowns aren't funny by nature because they're supposed to be. And I yeah. agree with you. I've never seen a clown that I particularly found funny. Yeah. They <laughs> indicate comedy. It's just like funny, but it's not funny. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I got uh, Wavy Gravy was in a parade and he was dressed in his clown suit, you know, with his red nose and everything. And I was filming him with a broadcast camera and he just turned around and he flipped me the bird. <laughs> <laughs> See? Well, you know, um, uh, yeah, well, Wavy Gravy isn't really a clown, but right. he, he yeah. dresses like one occasionally. And yeah, he says to protect himself from the police. He said, because you never see the police attacking clowns. <laughs> well, so anyway, so they, they, they uh, and did, did, have you ever had to deal with any ventriloquists at all? They're crazy too. I've met a couple uh, in Vegas. They seem to be businessmen first. They seem to be normal, but uh, we all grew up watching that Anthony Hopkins movie, and he's insane. And yeah, but um, but I, I don't know too many crazy events. But, uh, well, I'll tell you one ventriloquist I know that was to me seemed to be uh, out of his mind is Jeff Dunham. Uh, yeah. Because I was doing a thing with Jeff Dunham, and uh, after it was over, we were down in the basement of the theater uh, having pictures taken. And uh, so we're sitting there, and I'm sitting there, and here's, here's Jeff, and here's his, I don't know, whatever his puppet is. Maybe it was the grandpa one. I can't remember what it was. And me. Right. And, and, uh, Somehow Jeff had heard that I didn't like uh, prop comics or something like that. And mm -hmm. he looked over at me as we were taking these pictures and says, I hear you don't like prop comics. And I said, no, I, I love prop comics. It's ventriloquists I can't stand. And right. Dunham did not blink. But the right. dummy turned around, looked at me, and bared his teeth. <laughs> now to me, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's an extension. It, it, I mean, I, I did a little puppetry in high school, and you, the, the hand starts talking more than your mouth does, and it's weird. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, Bobby Slayton yeah. told me once that he was, uh, in, you know, sometimes in comedy clubs, when they hire people, they put them up in what they call their, their comedy condo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they buy a condo, and then they put all the comics up there whenever they come to town. And he right. came in one night, and uh, there was his... his uh, second act on the show who was a ventriloquist sitting there watching tv with his dummy and right. talking to the dummy about the tv show well that's that's odd and <laughs> slayton said he just yelled at him don't ever fucking do that again that's creepy yeah, yeah yes ray it, there is a broadway show that 
was a big deal the last couple of years, and now it's regional. It's called Hand to God. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's this kid whose hand becomes possessed by his sock puppet, and it's an evil sock puppet, and it possesses oh, this... But he I... possesses this kid's <laughs> hand, and he ends up killing people, and oh, it's it goes it's insane. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's a very dark comedy, but but aren't all on... sock puppets by nature evil? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, this one take is so evil. It, it like it it inhabits this child. When I was a kid, there was a movie. You know how you when you're growing up, there are movies you see that scare the shit out of you. And you always yeah. remember them because it, it kind of like, you know, imprinted itself on your on your brain. And it was called The Great Gabo, starring Eric von Stroheim. Oh. <laughs> and it's about this guy, and I can't even really remember the end because I was a kid and I'm watching the movie and it doesn't mean a lot to me. But at the end, the ventriloquist dummy comes alive and kills him oh, God. <laughs> at the end. Like Chucky. <laughs> yeah, like Chucky. Only it's a ventriloquist dummy. And to this day, I still remember that scene. It scared the shit out of me as a kid. And so therefore, I never found ventriloquists and their dummies who always looked evil. I mean, there isn't a dummy that doesn't look evil. So, oh, so Walter Winchell scared you when you were a kid? Walter Winchell? Charlie McCarthy and Walter. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Knucklehead. Oh, you mean Paul. you mean Charlie McCarthy? Charlie McCarthy. Charlie Was it Charlie you were thinking McCarthy? Paul yeah. Winchell. Paul Winchell. You're thinking Paul of Paul Winchell. Winchell. Yeah. What do you mean Walter Winchell? Paul Winchell. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Paul Winchell. Winchell Mahoney. Yeah, Winchell and Mahoney. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. right. And, and, and why is it that all ventriloquist dummies for years mm -hmm. they didn't after a while finally somebody decided hey I think I'll try another kind of puppet here, <laughs> uh, but they all looked Irish. Did you ever notice that? Yeah. They all had their, uh, their m most ventriloquist dummy, like Jerry Mahoney was an Irish dummy. Charlie McCarthy, an Irish dummy. Mm -hmm. um, Except for the black guy who was famous. I remember when I was a kid, he had a black black one, didn't look Irish. I used to oh, like oh, Willie Tyler. Oh, Lester. Willie Tyler and Lester. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who was the, 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 the one that had the uh, madam? Waylon oh, Flowers. Yes. Waylon. That, that, that hey, I funny. had a job I got in San Francisco. Uh, you know, I'm also, you know, I do professional video. I'm also a licensed tile contractor, and I get called Wait, in. Wait a minute, do you ever have job. to, is there, are you ever called to do both jobs at the same time, like uh, videotape tile? <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. You know, like a reality show. Yeah. Anyway, so you were, you were hired so, to do what? Yeah, so I, I went to this guy's uh, apartment. Uh, house in the Castro mm -hmm. and uh, there in these giant cases on his wall were Madame, those puppets uh, this guy uh, the puppeteer died of AIDS and this was his boyfriend I think and he, you know, I said, oh man I feel honored to be here you know, the, the, he had all the puppets right there you know, framed in these giant glass cases, you wow. know, it's kind of touching yeah, no, I mean uh, uh, but I mean it's, it's a strange art, yes um, uh, David Copperfield in Las Vegas has a huge warehouse, and he collects ventriloquist dolls uh, from old movies, things that freaked him out when he was a kid. And wow. there's this little room, and when he takes people on a tour, he just walks them into the room and just kind of shuts the door on them, leaves them, and they're they're just staring at all these dolls, <laughs> staring at you, and it really seems to freak out like eighty percent of people. That is crazy. They're like, oh, is that that thing from that movie? And and just 20, 30 dolls just staring at you, you know, in a circle. Wow. Wow. It's, uh, wow. Yeah. I guess you got to do it, and then you don't know if you're going to be freaked out until you're in that semicircle or whatever. Did you uh, Did you work with David Copperfield at all? No, 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 but uh, mutual friends, and, and you get the tour, and he's he's a very, very organized guy, and he's a collector of magic artifacts. He's a collector of things that are illegal to sell nowadays. They they used to sell practical jokes that would semi injure people, and you can't do you can't sell those anymore. Collapsible chairs, staircases that would collapse on people, and Whoa. and and he even has uh, these amazing nineteenth um, century wind up things like at the Museum of Mechanique and would want back in San Francisco, and uh, he just he knows a lot about history. So yeah, 
it, it, it's funny how I find, at least with magicians, I mean, the two that I know the, who are friends of mine are Penn and Teller. Yeah. And, and they all have a tendency to want to collect memorabilia and to mm. know the history of their profession and to maintain yeah. the history of their profession. They love VHS tapes. Yeah. They, they love VHS tapes, Ew. right. No, but I mean, um, uh, for instance, Teller... Uh, is pretty much a walking encyclopedia of how tricks work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he uh, he's studied it. He he started out as a college professor anyway, so I guess this just it was an extension of that. Not and uh, and, and yeah. Penn as well. They both know the history of magic more than any other. Um, yeah. David Copperfield just have to give up the secret to one of his jokes. Yes. or one of his tricks. Yes, in, in court. Because he was being sued by somebody who was an audience member who was involved in the trick. I may be wrong on this. Yeah, something and, like and, that. And so in order to explain how the, the, the safety factors go into it to prevent the person, the audience member, from being hurt, he had to explain how the trick was done. I believe the person got hurt and then sued him. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, so he had to explain it, and he really didn't want to. He fought it really hard. Yeah. They forced him to. Well, you know, I mean. Uh, I saw the testimony. It, it wasn't. Really? Happy. Yeah, I saw it on TV, a little bit of it. Yeah. But, I, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, the one thing that a magician doesn't want to reveal is how it's done. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's. We all know it's a trick. And the thing that's amazing is sometimes I see things, I like Penn and Teller have this show called. Uh, fool us and they invite magicians to come on and try to fool them by doing their tricks and i watch some of these guys and i go i know it's a trick i know it's there's a gimmick but i can't for the life of me and i i do know magic uh, quite a bit about magic and how tricks are done and you know uh, 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 how how you play a a person while you're doing the trick and so on and you're doing diversion and and all of that, and yet I will watch a I will watch him very carefully. I'll, even with television, you can go back and rerun the tape, and you can't see it. And and that's when it gets really amazing. You know, it actually goes from the realm of being magic to going into the realm of being magic. Yes, Ray. Yeah, who else is hey, Alex, you remember that that uh, original DVR that we all loved because you could forward thirty seconds. Um, I can't remember. I know. I remember you had one years and years ago. Yeah, yeah. Could, uh, re can, uh, my, my, replay, my I think it was and, called. Yeah, Replay TV. Yeah. My son and I used to watch Magic, and with that one, you could do one frame at a time. Yeah. Fast forward, and we would do it one frame at a time. And, it, and you still couldn't you, see often it. Often you could soften you could see it. You could often see Often you could see what they did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Not always, but often you can see that Rob, little, Rob was somebody doing something in the background really quickly. Or, yeah. Rob was trying to say something. Like uh, collapsing. Uh, so, Rob, you know, because you don't have a camera. So, the first night we were here uh, for this conference, uh, they had, they, you know, the opening uh, ceremony of this whole thing, They another group of guys who are pretty amazing to watch are mentalists. Yeah, the mentalists. These guys do mm -hmm. not do any magic, but they make you say things through suggestion. They they can they can figure out things. They'll write down crazy things and and you'll say them and it's fascinating how mentalists work. Uh hypnotist? Sorry? Are you talking about hypnotists? Uh, no, 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 no mentalists. Mentalists. They're the mentalists. guys that, They're the guys that will write an answer down on a card, okay? Yep. And the, they'll put it in their shirt or something. And then they'll go through the whole routine with the audience and uh, someone will uh, write a word and then show it. And then the guy will pull the thing out of his uh, shirt pocket and it will be the exact same word or something but like that. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. And he tries to explain it because th this guy makes a lot of money doing all these corporate events now they say that it's really just a matter of paying attention to your audience because they're, they're trying to help us use these techniques in sales ah cool 
That so they make a up. lot of money. They make a lot of money going around. These mentalists make a lot of money going around talking to sales organizations mm. because you could use the same <laughs> techniques in getting people to to give you basically what they're doing is your you write something down, you put it in your pocket or you seal it in an envelope, and then you do this thing with these people, and you will them. However, it is you manipulate them to writing down or saying the exact same thing that you wrote down. And that's how it works, but good luck trying to figure out how they do that. But he, they tried it to explain it a little bit. Uh, it's fascinating. The mentalists are also fascinating. If you get a chance to see one, yeah. they're good there. Uh, I, I agree with you 100%, Rob. I, in fact, it's funny, you, you talked about mentalists. That's what I was going to say. And, uh, you, you got ahead of me, but you're absolutely dead on about the mentalists. Yeah, fun, some of them use show. tricks though too. They they do it's all things. Tricks. Yeah, they do things like when you're waiting in the lobby, they have people uh, with recorders on and they listen to conversations. No, that's and... not the case. <laughs> if a real mentalist does not no. do that. I know. You're I'm saying the, the ones who, there, the but, scam ones. Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> I know people who are called up on stage. You know, and because yeah. uh, they he, this guy he involves he'll have you draw a picture. And then he'll unfold a picture that he just he'll he'll draw something, and then he'll call up a bunch of people on stage, and they'll put an easel in front of them, and he'll talk to them, and he'll interview them, and then they'll start drawing this, and then he'll say, oh wait, and he takes this thing out of his pocket and folds it, and it's the same exact flower or whatever, and these people have no idea how they did it. Okay. <laughs> I could have sworn that was a magic trick. Well, I I they do, I, they do a little bit. I actually book magicians and mentalists for corporate events and TV shows and uh, some people who know how it's done are just as fascinated because to be successful your presentation even if you know how it's done has to be entertaining and the really good ones they entertain you even if you know how it's done you know it's, it works on two levels in a way well mm. I have a friend Jamie Ian Swiss and Jamie is, do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, I, I, I know Jamie, yeah. Yeah, you know Jamie. Okay. So you know what I'm about ready, to, probably what I'm about ready to say. Jamie can do something right in front of me, this far from my face, okay? And I can't see it. I mean, it's just um, his dexterity with the deck is just absolutely uh, without peer. It's, it's wonderful. These guys, and those are the guys, those are the true, that's the true magic. Okay, because these are the guys who um, uh, uh, who are doing a a craft. They are doing a skill. You know, the magicians who use illusions. Basically, uh, some uh, a pen even said it once to me. He said, uh, you know, in in illusion magic, uh, the person doing the most work is the assistant. You know, uh, and and it's true. Illusions are built by these guys who know how to build illusions. Uh, a guy like a David Copperfield may know how to build them himself. If he doesn't, he buys them from other people. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, he then it is then all the presentation. You know, the pointing to stuff, and here's what you know this and that, and you know, uh, and and that's where that comes from. But when it comes to the real magic. This sleight of hand thing, which, by the way, doesn't play well in a big theater. That's the other problem with it. Really, these guys have to work cruise ships and have to work uh, corporate events and things like that because they have to go up and close up, show you all this, this ability. Yeah. It's some, incredible. Some guys get the overhead projector working pretty well. And yeah, they, the jumbotrons. Yeah. 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 But that, you know what the trouble with the overhead projector is? People can always say, well, maybe that's fake. You know, maybe that's being fake. There's these there's these magicians who are so good they amaze other magicians because they got state of the art. They yeah. blow away Teller. They blow away. The oh top yeah, no. I mean, uh, on the show, fool us. They get occasionally they get somebody who really fools them. They don't they don't know how it was done. I mean, they know it's magic, but the guy had a skill and a way of doing it. But all I'm saying is that whenever you see a guy doing sleight of hand, you're seeing the real deal. I mean, that's. That's the hard, hard ass magic to do. So, I, I, uh, I know one guy I worked for. I worked for five or six as an assistant, and his hand. He showed me his hand. He had these defined muscles that we wouldn't have defined from hours and hours of, of working at the 
coins and cards. He just his his hand was cut like someone's abdomen, you know. It was amazing to look at. Jamie says and, he has to do the cards every day. If he doesn't, it, it's like it's like sure. you know you you're it's mm. like muscle building. It's like working Absolutely. out. It's like you yeah. know training for a decathlon or whatever. You if you don't do it every day, you will lose it. You know. Makes sense. It's like hitting a baseball. There's a documentary out there right now about <laughs> right. Serena Williams having her baby and how she's been worried about the fact that she'll never really be able to get back into the game again because there was you know, so much to go through and just yeah. the whole right. process. And I imagine that a magician, uh, they, I saw one on Penn and Teller's show who was blind, a sleight of hand guy who was blind. Damn. What's his name? Do you remember? I can't remember. Um, okay. You know, I did, I'm I, sure he could. Google I didn't it. see his name. Uh, no, he uh, he was blind, and he did the whole thing blind. Yeah. And and just blew them away, blew them away. So I mean, it, it's um, when you see good uh, good sleight of hand, folks, and like you're saying, uh, uh, Rob, uh, a mentalist, because a mentalist works in many ways like a sleight of hand guy. Absolutely. There is a lot of sleight of hand with what he does. Without Richard the Turner? Yeah. R well, R Richard Turner, is that the blind guy on Penn and Teller? I don't know. I don't oh, remember. Oh, because I just Googled it. It says a uh, blind guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I've I've heard Penn say that all the mentalists are, are just doing magic. but Well, and, no, what and, he and wouldn't. And I looked it up just now, and there are ways to make it look what, like what bothers him. What bothers I've, him that, is he doesn't mind mentalists. He always told me, he said, I have nothing against mentalists, but he, for instance, he hated Uri Geller. He said, oh, right. not because Geller was doing a trick, but because Geller wasn't saying he was doing a trick. Right. In other <laughs> words, he wanted everybody to think that this ability he had was real. Right. And uh, he said that always bothered him. Uh, well, now you're talking about psychics. Huh? Oh, I hate psychics. Hate psychics. Well, I hate psychics. Years. years ago, I finally banned psychics from my radio show. I said, I don't <laughs> want them on. I said... It's a phony art, and it, it's a trick, and I don't want to be part of this canard because what they're doing is they're using it like to... I, I had this guy, remember Peter Herkos, remember the name, who was a mentalist, and he solved supposedly the Boston Strangler uh, <laughs> thing, right? And I had him in my studio. This was in Houston, Texas. It was that long ago. But I remember it taught me a lot about how these guys work. And he, so he's going, he, to begin with, they always talk with an accent. It was always thick with the accent because that threw you off, okay? And he goes, uh, and he goes so are you, uh, you know, uh, he says, uh, okay, uh, let me see, let me think, uh, see about you. I see you married. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I'm not married. And he said, no, but I see you married. Ah. Ah. ah, you see. So, I mean, it, 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 they always have an out for everything. And I've had people say, you know, they've been a, they did a thing with a mentalist, and the mentalist said, and you do this and you do this. I see you're, you have a sister, blah, 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 blah. And the person's going, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And after it was all over, I said, well, was he really that close on everything? He said, not at all. But for some reason, I kept agreeing that he was right. <laughs> you know, yes, Tom. Did you uh, ever get a chance to see the uh, documentary with um, James Randi, the amazing Randi? Yeah, he, he uh, he's a the, debunker. I think it's called uh, uh, an Honest Liar, is it? Yeah. I think that's the name of the movie, Honest Liar. When I was, when I was working in Florida at a uh, radio station down there between gigs at uh, Live 105 in San Francisco, uh, Penn, and, Penn Gillette came down to visit me. And be on my show and randy lives down there so he took me out to meet randy and mm -hmm. a fascinating human being and spent most of his life debunking these guys and especially uri geller well i'm thinking the other one of uh, who's the one that uh, patrick was given money to uh, oh well, that was uh that was uh that was the reverend uh, uh pop off pop off pop, pop off. off yes and Popoff was one of those people that used to, you know, have. Uh, well, Randy he, caught him. He, he, his, his wife was was secretly talking to people about about their dead relatives, 
and then feeding information into his ear through a you know a, but, an earpiece. You yeah, know? but here, and, but here's here's part of it though. Here's part of it you're you're not mentioning. She before the show, before the service would go right. out into the uh, 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 right. er, various areas where people were congregated and hear them talking to each other. And then she would catch a little piece of information here and a little information there. And then when he was out in the audience, she says, go to the person on your left. Uh, he has a brother. His name is Bob. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And then he would go, I, I see you have a brother and his name is Bob. And the guy would go, oh, yes, his name is Bob. <laughs> you know. And, so, and okay. he, what he did, what Randy did, was he went to one of these services, got into the hotel, went into a room above the auditorium where this thing was taking place, and intercepted the two-way signal between Popoff and his wife. <laughs> yeah. And then he released this to the press, and it ruined Popoff. Right, well, yeah. It ruined him until, of course, uh, little Patrick came along, and he was able to cure him. And as we all know, Patrick is walking. and uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Patrick would just send him pennies to keep on the mailing list. Well, no. What I what I suggested was is that you uh, to people was that if these people send you something and they they want money from you, uh, just send them pennies, like fill up a whole <laughs> bag with pennies because they pay for the postage. Right. And if you, they pay for the postage, it could cost them. A, you could put pop off out of business pretty goddamn fast. You know. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, well, but, the greatest musician is the guy that makes Trump disappear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> magician, yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. Hey, John, um, you do the video for that MMA uh, um, co company? Yes, Dragon that, House. Yeah, I've been watching, watching them. You do a great job. Oh, thank you. Do you have two cameras or three? Uh, I, you know, I'm working on a third one, oh, okay. but basically it's two and it, it's a uh, handheld. It's a, a actual, you know, human operators uh, working. I know oh. a lot of the UFC fights have robotic cameras. Okay. Uh, and, and I think they use some, uh, you know, cage cameramen too. Well, you oh, could okay. use robotic cameras in MME, couldn't you? Because you're really working within a confined space. Yeah. So you can and, predict and you ahead. Don't, on a big venue like that where people are paying Boku bucks, you can't have an operator standing there and blocking someone's view. So I th that's why, well, yeah, yeah, it's cleaner to use robotics. And, uh, uh, it, you know, it's nice to have a guy go down there once in a while on the cage and shoot something. But we're on the cage all the time. Yeah. But it seems like you switch like between the two cameras, and then sometimes it's yeah. a wide angle, and sometimes it's close. And that, but yeah. it's handheld. It looks really steady. No, uh, bo uh, both are on tripods. Oh, they're on tripods. Okay. Yeah, it'd be too wiggly, too yeah, shaky. That's what I, th uh, I thought you said it was handheld. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I meant to. Well. Oh, okay. How yeah. do you feel about working in a business where people go in and try and kill the shit out of each other? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it, it's disturbing. Because there's nothing, there's nothing phony see, about it. This is not like wrestling where it's all pre-scripted and everything. This is hardcore. No, no, kick them in the ass. There's a lot of skill in MMA. Uh, not oh, only yeah. are these folks adept at elements of boxing, but they know how to use their whole bodies and their legs and certain types of locks, uh, like headlocks and uh, arm bars and uh, rear naked choke holds and. Things like that. Uh, that sounds you know, like so the name of some rock group, the rear stuff. naked b b b choke holes. Yeah. <laughs> well, know, the, prob yeah, the problem ahead. I have um, with the professional. So I went to a, a Muay Thai tournament and they had amateurs and professionals and people in between. When they got to, to the professionals, there was a marked difference in like attitude. They wanted, they really, really wanted to hurt each other. Mm. And um, yeah. there's no holding back. I mean, they are trying to put the other guy in a coma. And uh, in the amateur, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, it, gets, it, it got to the point where it's like, wow, I don't like watching this. I'd rather watch the amateurs. Even though they might be almost as skilled, there's a little, it's like they'll go 99%. Yeah, you know? the, in the MMA circuit that I work with, I the, the major feeling I get from it is the the meditative discipline behind MMA. Like these uh, guys are, uh, 
uh, and you, you know, they also teach self-control. You know, that's uh, an amazing uh, talent to have when you go into a fight because if you, you they call it gassing out. You know, if you expend too much energy in the early rounds, throwing punches or being aggressive, a smart fighter will be patient with that and wait uh, until the guy, the opponent, gasses out, and then they can start using their reserves. And they train for these things. They, they but there, there's nothing at all phony about these things at all. No, not a not a bit. Oh no. Yeah. I, and, I like the I Dragon think, House too because it's not a lot of times in the US, UFC, yeah. you know, Dana White and stuff is looking for the crazy guys, the ones who are going to taunt the people ta taunt their You're opponent. really into this, uh, aren't you? Well, because <laughs> I because I've been doing Muay Thai for I don't do it anymore, but I did it for a long time, so I I know a lot about it. I I like watching the the Let the me ask you something, Ray. Circuit. Let me ask you something. You okay. are of all the people here, the most probably physically fit and, and have probably been in the sports more than anybody in this group. Anybody in here really into physical sports like crazy? <laughs> at any? How about now? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I still mountain bike. I, oh, really? Uh, okay. I and I, I, Tom uh, bikes and things like that. Yeah. But it sounds like you were rough and tumble, Ray. Yeah. How many injuries do you have? Um, I got arthritis all over my body. I have no, I have barely any cartilage left in my knees. Oh, that's a rough one. Yeah. Um, I have arthritis in my back. I've had head injuries. I've had, you know, I used to race bikes. I crashed a bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of injuries. I'm in pain a lot sometime. Hey, so Every try day CBD, Ray. I do. It helps me a lot. Yeah, I just started good. using it about um, What's CBD? three months ago. And if I use it, it every day, I definitely oil. notice the difference. Yeah. I like the kind without THC or almost yeah. no THC. You know, yeah, what's, it, what's interesting don't... is, do you remember years ago on Saturday Night Live, Chevy Chase would open up every show by a saying to me and then doing a pratfall and then saying live from New York at Saturday yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, he did that only, and people don't re realize this, he was only on that show for 13 weeks. Then he became a big star, and he went off and made movies. He only did 13 weeks. 13 pratfalls, and to this day, he says it, he can barely get out of bed in the morning. He aches so much wow. from those pratfalls. Yeah. Jerry Lewis complained about the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you the problem is when you're performing, uh, you forget uh, your adrenaline is gets up there and that's what john was talking about with these fighters is they learn how to control that well also at, uh, at, at chevy's age he could do that 13 weeks yeah. in a row and never feel it he didn't feel it until he got to be 40. Yeah. And, and then it, you know all the things he did to his body taking those pratfalls came home to roost yeah you know i i i, I, I was skied since i was a kid and i had a uh, meniscus surgery on my knee four years ago yeah. and i haven't skied since and i tried to go skiing and i and, and I couldn't ski. I went. I did three runs, and my knee was swollen up like a, a grapefruit. Really? Because yeah. I, because I, you, you know, know, swimmers seem to do pretty well because they're they're not putting shock on their yeah. joints and cartilage. That, yeah. It's low impact. Yeah. 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 And swimming's maybe the best thing for you. Yeah. Uh, but and I walking, uh, wa walking and hiking. You know. I, I tore my meniscus, and uh, as you, you all know, because it's the only thing I can complain about. And uh, but it, it it hasn't really been bothering me lately. It's gotten yeah. it's gotten better on its own. That's good. But you if know, it's not really bad. It can. Oh, yeah. if it's not really bad, it can. Uh, you know, who had a men knee meniscus surgery is my our friend Albert Reynoso. When I was working with him at uh, at uh, um, Sirius yeah. XM, he had a torn meniscus and he had to have it operated on uh, most doctors will say well let's see if we, we can through physical therapy at least it'll never go away but we can minimize the effect of it and uh, apparently I did some physical therapy and stuff and one thing or another and now I, like I said to myself the other day I, had, I maybe once in a while it kind of aches a little bit but that's it well what happened to me was I did the physical therapy and it helped but then the, the torn cartilage created this like cyst inside 
way inside my knee. You could only see with, and, uh, with an MRI. And it was causing my uh, lower leg to get all swollen up, and I could barely walk. So they oh, had to. Shit. They had to do this. They had to do it. Yeah. You yeah. had to go and cut it all yeah. out, or I would be like yeah. in it, disabled. You know, my wife loves to do her uh, go to the gym, and she we used to what, race. Uh, you know, race her bike, and she do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, eventually, her back went out. She had to have a, a, it operated on. So anybody that tells me this stuff is really terrific for you. Hey, look at me. You know, I'm I'm 78 years old, and I can't say that outside of the torn meniscus, I have any major physical problems. A little arthritis in the hand, but that's the it. The problem was in the 70s and 80s. It was like do as much as you can, go for it. It's the best thing. And now they're realizing the people who live the longest and who are the healthiest do very moderate exercise. Well, it's my theory, and and and, 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 and have good social networks. And I I once and, I once told this to. Uh, Richard Simmons and made him get apoplectic when I said it and that was that I go by a philosophy that if you don't use your body it won't wear out Donald Trump says that he <laughs> believes that well but he adds to it uh, by the way by the way greatest photo ever I think we talked about it last night Meghan Markle's father last week had a heart attack all right the picture that they had of him was him leaving Kentucky Fried Chicken with a bag of Kentucky Fried Chicken and this huge pot belly. And I'm going, no shit. You know, and you're wondering why you had a heart attack. And now he can't go to the wedding because he had his heart operated on today. So, you know. Uh, boy. Here's, my C here's some CBD that I... What is CBD? Uh, well, cannabinoid... Oh, it's marijuana. Yeah. Well, you can get you can make Cabinet, it either for marijuana or hemp. Yeah. And if you get it with marijuana, um, you have to tell you have to you can get it with various amounts of THC. Um, if you get like twenty to one, you're not going to get stoned. Yeah. You know, twenty to one. Twenty to one. Twenty percent. Twenty parts CBD to one percent THC. This um, this has no out? THC or almost no. What, THC. What are you going to say, Rob? Hemp. What happens if you have to get drug tested? Would that show up in your system? Yeah. Uh, well, there's no THC. Uh, actually, there's a negligible amount that's not that is a legal amount. It's because it's from hemp. It's not from. Uh, from and and what does that do for you? It, it's basically um, uh, it's basically an anti-inflammatory. Okay. And it can also help with anxiety, which I noticed. Yeah. It helps. It helped me with my head injury a lot. Wow, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's it's subtle, but it, you definitely feel it. Like I had a TMJ in my jaw, and after I took this for every day for about four weeks, the TMJ went away. Wow, and it's good. Does it come back if you stop taking it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's the, it's the in, anti it's the infl inflammation that comes back, I guess. Now yeah. we we can't get that here in New York, can we? Yeah, you can't. I, I think you can if it's from hemp. I think you can. And it's called CHB? CB no, CBD. CBD. Alex, if you Google uh, projectcbd.org, yeah. yeah. that has everything you need to know. It's all science. And it's what's, science. It, what's it good for? Is it good for it's like... Just what Ray said. It, and uh, people have been cured by for, uh, for epilepsy with CBD. They know it's Skin good. cancer. They're documented. Oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second. I, I'm not going with the skin cancer thing. Yeah. You know, anytime, oh, no. anytime yeah. any yeah. of this over-the-counter shit is, uh, yeah. c claims to cure cancer, I have to put the brakes on. Yeah. Well, you know? You know check, I, I mean, go to uh, projectcbd.org. Yeah, but I don't like people to think if they've got cancer, they can try this stuff and they don't need to go see a doctor, Okay. Uh, I, I'm firmly of the belief that if you've got cancer, you got to see a doctor about oh, it. Oh yeah, sure. You know, but some some of these docs are uh, prescribing yeah. uh, cannabinoids for uh, treatments, such as uh, Ray was mentioning, and and they are found to be effective uh, and easier on people than opioids. You know, we have an opioid crisis in uh, yep. the country right now. And, right. Uh, you know, the, I think uh, I mentioned it before in a previous show that the Israelis are doing the best research on uh, THC and CBD and uh, 
they're coming well, out with products you, you, now. You know what I have always believed, though? If you have an opioid crisis, the first way that you, um, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? The first way that you, that you put the brakes on it is by legalizing this shit. And, so and having I, I think, it, yes, Rob. I think most of it is not caused by your corner pusher. It's caused by people who get who get hurt, and they get on opioids. They get they get prescription medications. Yeah, yeah. It's right. it's not about the legalizing it or not. It's it's really coming from pharmacy from pharmacist. You know, pills. Do you know how paranoid yeah. they're getting about this now? My wife has to take a. Uh, um, I think it's not OxyContin, but it's one of the other oxys, okay, for her back. Uh, because it, she has a great deal of pain from time to time. Some days she doesn't have it at all, and she's very careful about not using it. And she has a pain management person who, who keeps an eye on how much she's using and so on. Well, we went to this new um, prescription drug plan, the Express Scripts, and they said... Uh, we're, we got to give you, you know, since you're taking this drug, we are going to give you a free uh, dose of whatever that drug is that they shoot up people's noses <laughs> if they're overdosing. <laughs> and and yep. Yep. Uh, what's it called? I can't remember the name of it now. Yeah. Uh, neo, not neoprenef. Uh, yeah, well, anyway. Uh, yeah. And she said, well, you know, I, I'm not going to overdose. And they went, you never know. You might take two when you should have taken one because you forgot yeah. that you took the other one. And then you might overdose, and you've got this, okay? So we have it here in the house, you know. So Narcan. I, Narcan. So yeah. uh, I'm thinking of scoring some smack and overdosing just for the fun of it. <laughs> just to see if it works. Just to see if it works. You know, get the Narcan over here, dear, you know. There's another epidemic that's just as bad as the opo opioids is the benzodiazepine medications like uh, uh, va uh, Valium and Clonopin and Xanax. Well, I'm, like I here, here I have a scene right there. There's a, yeah. a Xanax right there. I take, uh, take a little bit of Xanax, no more than a little bit of it, almost every other night to put me to sleep. Okay. I have to – I take – well, that's good. So I take two Clonopin every night because I was having trouble sleeping like 15 years ago. Yeah. And now I'm addicted. Yeah, you were saying wow. that before. And, and and so I'm starting. I'm getting ready now to come off of it. And it might. I hope it's not life in hell. For some people, it uh, is. Yeah, well, when I, if I don't do and, the Xanax for a couple of nights, I don't feel anything terrible. But well, because you're taking it every other day and you're taking a small amount, which is you're doing it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. See, but 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 te uh, these doctors were prescribing this, these benzodiazepines up until recently, like candy, and uh, mm -hmm. and now they know it causes uh, dementia, and so oh, and they're they're trying to get everybody off of it. Wow. Yeah. And it's extremely difficult for a lot of people to get off of. Mm. Wow. I got off a part of it. Now I got the rest, and the last part is the hardest. I can't believe you know, that. You know what I'm excited about the, the CBD research is that it's opening up a wider spectrum of natural therapies and natural plants. I, I met, uh, in, well, I got hired, I was filming Paul Stamets, you know, who uh, famous for Mycelium Nation and uh, doing research to show how mushrooms were eating up toxic chemicals, and you know, at a waste site, you know, better than any other... Uh, uh, you know, manufactured chemical remedy for removing toxins out of soil. Yeah. And uh, he actually censored me. Uh, he's, he gave me permission to film. And then uh, I, I put it on YouTube and they said, oh, you got to take it down. Because it was, a, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I, I mean, he hasn't, you know, written, told me not to talk about it. But uh, psilocybin mushrooms have in uh, shown to have some uh, good effect on reducing the effects of sarin nerve gas poisoning you know he said you know i'm doing research for the government and i can't talk about that so wow. so sorry paul you know there i am on in international bennett tv you know saying yeah that. well but nobody's watching the reason i'm no, saying nobody's that watching this plants, anyway so <laughs> plants have uh, amazing healing properties and uh, I, I think we should uh, remove the Schedule One 
classification which, uh, for marijuana, which is the same as heroin? Come on. Give oh, me here a break. in New York, they finally break. decided that they're going to, they're not, uh, Brooklyn and uh, Manhattan DA have decided they're not going to bust people for marijuana any longer. Good. And I went, uh, how long has this taken you to come around to this decision? And they yeah. said the reason they're doing it is because they've targeted black people and Hispanics. And I said, well, then I thought about it. My wife does a joint every night, and she's white and doesn't even worry about getting busted. Mm -hmm. Yes, t uh, Tom. San Francisco has actually uh, uh, started a program where they're going back for t uh, back to the mid '70s, trying to uh, clean up everybody's records who've ever been arrested. Yeah, that's good. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But so I mean, retroactively now, I think that should happen. But a lot of those people spent time in jail. Yeah, you know. True. And how do you give them that back? Yeah. yeah. By the way, let me let me just ask uh, 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 Chris. I want uh, where uh, where are you calling from exactly? What area of the world? I'm in uh, Northwest Las Vegas tonight. tonight. Northwest Las Vegas tonight? You say tonight. Why? Do you live in various places? Or? Uh, I go back and forth between here and L.A. and Big Bear, California. Big what? Bear? Why, that? why Big Bear? Big Bear is oh, about 87 miles, air miles away from Los Angeles. It's uh, oh. San Bernardino Mountains. Oh. They got a I lake. Just there. Drove through there. Yeah. You just drove through there. Yeah, you it's just drove through there. It's a 157-mile flight from Vegas. Wow. I'm way up north. I take it. I take it that's your your vacation home, right? I, I work out of both places. Really? So someone I know has houses in both places, and I look after them and such. So, God, yeah. you've got an interesting life. But yeah, we're it's a uh, it's a lot of fun right now because all those Pacific Crest Trail hikers are walking from Mexico to Canada, and they oh, yeah. walk to Big Bear uh, around day 14 on their trip, and you meet them and you. Uh, try to get them a, a ride to the post office or whatever they need. You, you try to be an angel, get them some fresh food, a oh, real cool. grocery store. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's great. like a four and a half mile, that's yeah. like a four and a half month hike for those people. From, from where to where? They walk from, most of them walk from Mexico to Canada and they have to make it before it snows. And then later on, people walk from Canada to Mexico and it's like 2,700 miles. Now, why, are they, well, I, yeah. why are they doing this? Just for the, for the experience of beauty, for the, for the, beauty, for the, for the okay. exercise to say they did it. It's a professional hiking almost. Yeah. So, it's yeah. a thing. Yeah. You can't drive it. You have to walk this yeah. trail. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Chris, you don't really I go through big was, cities that much. So. When I was a kid, I, re I read a book about uh, the first guy who did that by himself. Yeah. Uh, and no one had done it. Have you read that book? Uh, I've, I've heard about it. I know he, he had to blaze trails. That it wasn't a clear path for him, right? Oh, so. my God. It's an incredible book. Uh, this guy almost died a whole bunch yeah. of times <laughs> because the, play, the, the trail really wasn't ready everywhere. And, uh, he had no support. Uh, he had to beg for food sometimes. His sleeping bag lost all of its down. Oh, my God. It was, and then when he got to Mexico, he had no water, and there was no one around to give him any. Wow. It was incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. Hey, listen, there, there's our lovely and uh, wonderful oh. theme song. Uh, so what have we learned tonight? Again, nothing. But what the <laughs> hell, we had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, John Perulis, thank you so much for calling us this evening. Uh, and, and by the way, the audience has stayed rather constant tonight, which means they were enthralled by everything you guys had to say. And it was a very Hope interesting so. evening. Uh, uh, Chris, we love hearing from you. Call us anytime, please. Now that I'll you know how it works. When I get a break from everything, I will. Yeah. Please. And and Ray Renati, always wonderful hearing from you. Tom, Thanks, you Tom. are our, our rock, as it were. <laughs> uh, and I can always count on you to, to call when I need you. You know, and I, <laughs> I appreciate it. And Rob? Well, this, this is the last time this week. Yeah. I, I'm not going to be around next two Oh, uh, no, because Phil, Phil will be around the rest of the week, right? That's the reason why. <laughs> no, I'm actually, I, I've got to be them tomorrow night, and yeah. then I'm going away for the weekend on Friday. Okay, well, have a nice, nice yeah, weekend. Yeah, I'm going away. to Yosemite this week, tomorrow yeah. through Sunday. Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, uh, Rob, thank you. Get back soon, will you? All right. Okay, how many more days do you have there in Nashville? I, I come home Friday night. Friday night. Okay. Have, have safe travel. And uh, everybody, uh, except for Rob, of course, he can't wave goodbye to everybody. There yes, we, I can. Uh, yes, you can. Oh. 
I'm waving. Oh, okay. He's waving. <laughs> Picture it in your mind. <laughs> okay, I'm picturing it in my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizens panel for tonight. Wow. Uh, terrific. Good show. Good bunch of people. And uh, you've been a good audience, too. So, well, how do I know that? I can't see you. Anyway, uh, stay tuned next uh, for uh, the uh, intersection with Jack and Amy. They're next over most of this same gab net. At 1 o'clock this morning, yes, it's Connections. And then tomorrow night at 9.30, Damian Chaplin with The Exchange. I'll be back again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.